okay. So that's the thin film. And like I said, there's some complications we didn't go through, but you don't need to master them for the course. You just have to um, use the formula. You just take the information you're given and plug into the formula. One thing that might be important to keep in mind, though, is as you already figured out, the path length difference here doesn't depend on D. It depends on 2D. But usually, even that is already already put into the formula. Yeah, so if you look at the formula in the book, they have this formula in the book. Here's one of the formulas they give you in the book. We won't talk all the way through it, but notice there's a number two in here. So they, that's 2ND. Yeah, 2ND. N is the index of refraction of the film. That was another effect that you have to take into account. Uh, and this, is, this happens to be the, the, uh, the uh, this is actually for the constructive interference condition. This is the constructive interference condition. Yeah. Now, it turns out this is not an obvious formula. Again, there's some complications that we didn't talk through here. The book works this out. But you wouldn't be expected to derive this formula. I just want to point out, we know where the number 2 is coming from. The number 2 is coming from because the, the path length difference depends on 2D, not just on D. Um, so basically, you would just be given this formula or you have it in your cheat sheet. And you would uh, plug into this. So again, how would you use this? Would you, you would use this to figure out which colors combine constructively. You could use this to figure out which colors can combine constructively and which ones can't. Um, is there a is there a maximum wavelength that will work here or a minimum wavelength? This will be our last idea. This is for constructive interference. So there's many different colors that could give you constructive interference. But is there a maximum wavelength that would work here or a minimum? Well, is there a maximum M or a minimum M? M is just from, yeah, again, is our index. M here is, again, from 0, 1, 2, 3. So the minimum M is 0. When M is at its minimum, would lambda be at a maximum or a minimum? At a uh, minimum? Now let's see here. This is constant, right? Oh, so because this is just the thickness of the film. Remember, we're keeping the same film and we're shining different colors at it. We're taking the faint same film and shining different colors at it. So this is constant. So if M is very small on the left-hand side, lambda would have to be very big. Otherwise, we couldn't still get the same product on the left-hand side. So when M is at its minimum, lambda would have to be at its maximum. What that means is there is a certain maximum wavelength that can experience the constructive interference. And any color above that wavelength can't experience constructive interference, no matter what you do to M. No matter what you do to the M, there's a certain wavelength that, uh, uh, past which bigger wavelengths can't experience the constructive interference. How would we calculate this maximum wavelength that can experience constructive set, interference? Set M to zero. Yeah, you would just set M equal to zero, and then what would you get? The M would just be zero. So then it's for um, NG. Yeah, so that's actually a common type of question for thin films. A common type of question is to calculate what's the maximum wavelength that can experience um, constructive interference. Well, you plug in, and again, the key thing here is how do you get the maximum lambda when you plug in the minimum M? Because if there's one number on the left-hand side that's very small, the, that makes the other number on the left, right hand, uh, right, on the, there's one number on the right that's very small, the other number has to be very big so that we can still equal the term on the left hand side. All right, so that's a common way that thin films are tested to find the maximum wavelength that can experience the constructive interference. Yes, it is. All right, and like I said, uh, we haven't explained all the little details of this formula. There are some complications based on um, things that happen when you uh, move from one index of refraction to another. But this turns out to be, uh, this is a formula you wouldn't be expected to prove. You just use it. Okay. Thanks. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype. 
and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.